650, welcome back to the Valley Today. We're taking a live look at the nation's capital this morning, and Hillary Clinton is maintaining her large lead in the polls weeks after the Democratic National Convention. A new poll out this morning by NBC News and SurveyMonkey shows Clinton leading Donald Trump by eight points in a head-to-head -head matchup. In a four-way general election matchup, the poll found that Clinton holds a five-point margin over Trump. Well, a very good Tuesday morning, everyone, and thank you so much for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Kyle Bosch. Lisa Badeau has the morning off. We're just getting started with nonstop news and weather all the way up to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we start with a Valley News Live exclusive this morning. A Fargo mom is wondering if she and her young daughter were being stalked during a routine trip to the grocery store. Amy McLeod tells Valley News Live that she thinks a man and woman were following her through the Osgood Hornbachers in South Fargo. Now, she posted about the story online and it went viral, shared almost 3,000 times with a number of other local moms commenting that something similar has happened to them. McLeod says it's an important reminder to keep your eyes open. Well, I was uncomfortable getting a couple common threads here, so then I decided to make a public post um, just warning the rest of my friends and family that, that live in the area. Now, McLeod tells us that the Hornbachers is taking the situation seriously, but Hornbachers said they do not want to comment on this story just yet. Fargo police say a report has not been filed. Well, we are getting some new information this morning on the relationship between a man accused of kidnapping and killing a five-year-old Minnesota girl over the weekend and the, that girl's family. A friend says 25-year-old Zachary Anderson plays softball with and works at the same company as Elena Ertel's father. The friend also says there was a softball game in Watkins Friday night, and Anderson sometimes stays at the Ertel's house because he drinks at the games. Elena Ertel was reported missing Saturday morning. Police found Anderson and the girl's body a few hours later. Now, Anderson is expected to be charged today with kidnapping and murder. A check of his criminal history shows just traffic tickets and a burglary when he was 17. A candlelight vigil for Elena will be held tonight at 8.30 at the Church of St. Anthony in Watkins. A GoFundMe account for the family has raised more than $27,000 so far. Time to get a look at weather and traffic on the ones now on this Tuesday morning. A big back to school morning and we start with meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning. Yes, a big day for students and we are looking at a warm one too. A little on the unsettled side as well. This morning out at the bus stop temperatures right around 70 degrees. It will be breezy though. Winds gusting into the 20s right now and there are a couple of isolated storms out there to watch out for as well. Now this afternoon it looks like a hot one. Temperatures in the 80s and into the low 90s to head home from school in and in addition that's still on the breezy side winds into the 30 mile per hour range and we could see a couple of more isolated showers and storms though the better bet will be a little bit later into the evening hours for tonight here's a look at what we have going on some storms popped up in southeastern north dakota those continue to spread northeastward into trail county northwestern parts of cass and back over into barnes county a brief area of heavy rain but there is some lightning out there so uh you know you don't want to be waiting out at the bus stop as this storm approaches. So far, West Fargo is looking okay. Uh, we'll put this into motion to show you uh, how this is moving. It's basically moving to the north and east, so it will take its time to approach the FM metro, and it may just skirt us here. We'll have to keep an eye on that as that continues moving in. Now, up to the north, a couple more storms. One uh, in parts of Walsh County and northern parts of Grand Forks County, seeing some lightning associated with that as well. The rest of us on the quiet side. 70 in Fargo, 70 in Grand Forks, some 60s elsewhere looking pretty warm this morning and here's a look at those winds into the 20s out of the south uh, for us for this morning and perhaps getting a little stronger into the afternoon hours today so a warm first day back to school a little bit unsettled here for Wednesday cooler temperatures in the upper 70s and some isolated showers still kind of hanging around after that system and into Thursday back into the 70s as well we hang on to those 70s through Friday let's check in with Al Lisa, we're back out on uh, Interstate 94, and one of the first places I wanted to check was 20th Street in Moorhead. And 20th Street traffic is definitely filling up already this morning. That's only, what, five minutes to seven. So you're going to want to watch for that again today. We don't want to have a repeat performance of what happened out there yesterday with all of those crashes that we had. But there were traffic backups, and traffic's definitely building out here. We'll keep tabs on it the rest of the morning for you. Uh, travel speeds out here in the interstate are generally in that 60 to 65 mile an hour range. 
quick reminder for you, we have a stalled car on southbound Interstate 29. It's at the 12th Avenue North Ramp, where there's another traffic tie-up, a bottleneck there from I-29 west of 45th Street. And don't forget, we told you about the intersection for eastbound traffic at the 25th and the 32nd. That's going to be shut down for a pretty good hunk of the day today. So plan for congestion there as well. Drive carefully today, as always, Al Ahmed Valley Today traffic. Five minutes ahead of 7 a.m. now. Students across the valley, some of them, are waking up early this morning and headed back to school. It's an important reminder to watch out for those kids out on the road this morning. The Valley Today's Christy Larson is joining us live from one of the districts that is headed back to class today, West Fargo. Hi, Christy. Good morning, Kyle. I know a lot of parents getting their camera phones ready to go as the first day starts to unfold for a lot of people. And Dr. Fremstead is here with me this morning, West Fargo High School principal. And I know you guys are very excited to bring the students back and kind of nice to have a four day week before coming fully back for a five day week of school. Yes, uh, our students, I think they rely on that four day week. Uh, five days is certainly a stretch when you're just starting out. So four is a nice way to start. You guys start off with a pep rally, but you wanted to give another important reminder for those who are either the students driving to school or parents dropping them off. There's going to be quite a bit of traffic around this area. There is. We still have construction going on on site, and so um, we just ask that people slow down and, and look for our students and pedestrians. Our parking lots will be full and busy, and we should have people out there helping kind of guide traffic, but just be on the lookout for students today. And that goes with everyone throughout the whole district. You know, West Fargo actually has 950 bus stops that are picking up and dropping off 4,000 students, and that's just every single day. So, Kyle, I know a lot of parents and other drivers, maybe you don't have a student, you need to be aware of those kids that are going to be going to and from school starting today in the district. Yeah, keep an eye out for them for sure. And, of course, more kids headed back later this week. Fargo schools going back on Thursday. Thanks, Christy. A LA City man says he is thankful to be alive after allegedly being threatened with a gun over the weekend. Police say that two men pointed a gun at 20-year-old Christian Swenson. They were looking for a juvenile girl. Now, Swenson says he tried to defend himself but was put into a chokehold and went unconscious. The man allegedly then went to another house, threatened a man and woman, and found the girl and took her. The girl later escaped when the men stopped at a gas station in Valley City. 23-year-old Johannes Brannon of Finley and 22-year-old Drew Gullix of Valley City are being held in the Barnes County Jail on charges of terrorizing, kidnapping, and burglary. Developing for you this morning, we've got more details about a story that we first broke for you on the Valley today. Police now say a woman is dead and a man is being treated for a gunshot wound after police responded to a medical situation at a West Fargo home. It all happened around 9 Sunday night in the 400 block of C Street. Detectives are not yet releasing the names of the man or woman involved. Neighbors say the pair were married but getting a divorce. Thompson, North Dakota voters are set to head back to the polls today. The fourth time in four years they'll be voting on a school expansion project. The $10 million proposed project failed by just seven votes during the last go-round. The project would include a larger lunchroom and more classroom space. School officials say that enrollment is going up and they're running out of room. Now, if passed, it would mean a $260 tax hike for the owner of a $100,000 home. 60% approval is needed. Of course, Bison fans have been counting down the days until Saturday and the sleeps as well. The NDSU football team set to kick off another season with a goal to defend their FCS crown, their sixth, trying to get their sixth straight crown. 14 starters are returning this season for the Bison football team. Should be a little more conference confidence to the table than the start of last year when there was a lot of young talent going to the field. But no matter the age or experience, head coach Chris Kleiman says the first game has some very distinct expectations. Didn't matter uh, of what year this was from going into the Iowa State game to going to the Montana game to this year. There's a lot of unknowns when you go into the first game of the season. And so the uh, biggest thing for us is to just try to play a clean game. What I mean by that is uh, limit penalties, don't turn the football over, and you can't give up big plays. And if you do those things, you have an opportunity to be successful. And, of course, before the action gets started, you can join us on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Things get going this Saturday at 530 on KV. L -Y. All right, let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, an online poll asked people, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? And 28% said this. The answer, go back to school. Appropriate on this back to school morning. Have a great rest of your Tuesday and a very safe first day of school, kids. We'll see you tomorrow morning.